Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you are truly passionate about music, you're going to want to subscribe below so you don't miss out. You know, I remember the first time I heard The Cars. It was like that scene from The Wizard of Oz where everything goes from black and white to magnificent color. Ironically, their own song title is like the perfect explanation. She moves in stereo. It's like the cars took us from moving in mono to moving in stereo. From the release of their self-titled debut album in 1978 through 1988, the cars were a dominant force on the music scene with a long list of pop and album rock hits along with six gold or platinum albums. The five original members of the cars were truly underrated musicians that thankfully got their due when they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018. But let's be clear, they should have been first ballot shoo-ins. Their performance at the Hall of Fame award ceremony was sadly their last live performance as the Cars. In September 2019, co-lead vocalist and co-founder Rick Ocasek passed away. And sadly, we had already lost co-lead vocalist and co-founder Benjamin Orr to pancreatic cancer in 2000. The Cars are easily one of the most beloved bands ever. You couldn't really define them because everybody claimed them. I remember in high school, they were the only band that literally everybody dug. I mean, the cowboys, the jocks, the cheerleaders, the nerds, the wavers, the skaters, the gearheads, the preppies, the god squad, the thespians, the goths. I mean, you get it. Everybody loved the cars. The cars formed in Boston in 1976, and songs from their self-produced demos began to get significant airplay on Boston radio stations. They signed with Elektra in 1977 and were initially labeled as a new wave band by the industry. That first album, released in 1978, was a massive success, selling more than 6 million copies, and it remained on the Billboard album chart for 139 consecutive weeks. It's one of the best albums of all time, any band, any genre. It's just incredible. The Cars were different from the guitar-oriented rock bands of the late 70s because they incorporated so many different styles to make their music really stand out especially their use of synthesizers to blend with art rock and rockabilly influences. They were one of the first true power pop rock bands and helped usher in the new wave synth era of the early and mid 80s. The Cars disbanded in 1988. Now, Okasik had already released two solo albums by the time the band broke up and had a number one album rock track and a top 15 pop hit with Emotion in Motion, great song. That was from his second solo release, This Side of Paradise, in 86. Easton had a solo album in 85, and Orr followed with a solo album in 1986 that yielded a number 24 pop hit with Stay the Night, another great song. The true wonder of the cars, though, were the variety that the two voices brought to the songs. I'm going to highlight my fiver by the cars, but before I do that, I want to single out each of the five original band members of the cars and just recognize their enormous talent. Benjamin Orr, co-lead vocalist and bass guitarist. Although Benjamin was the bassist for the Cars, he was proficient with many instruments besides the bass, including keyboards and drums. Benjamin Orr is one of my favorite vocalists ever. Amazing vocalist and an amazing lyricist. When the Cars played Just What I Needed on the Midnight Special in 1978, go look it up, he is the epitome of cool, which is, you know, he's nonchalant like a Midwestern Bowie, or could well so effortlessly, he was just so rad. Rick Ocasek, of course, co-lead vocalist and rhythm guitar. Some people have a hard time telling the difference between Benjamin and Rick's vocals, but I didn't have that problem. Ocasek had a quirky voice that I think gave the cars more of a new wave sound. When he sang lead, like like Orr, Okasik was a versatile and gifted lyricist. He could write cerebral tunes like Moving in Stereo, incredible, or a melancholy ballad like Drive. He rocked a mullet when mullets were cool, and he was always wearing sunglasses. He just had his own style. He was uh, the most iconic, I think, and recognizable of the original five members. Elliot Easton, lead guitarist. 
Easton should be mentioned in a conversation about the best rock guitarist of all time. He was certainly one of the most inventive. I mean, he was especially adept at creating a guitar line that provided catchy instrumental hooks to complement the vocal chorus on virtually all of the car's hits. His guitar playing was an indispensable part of the car's distinctive sound. Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver guitar Slash calls Easton one of his biggest influences. Greg Hawks, keyboardist. Greg was another truly invaluable part of the car's sound. He was a pioneer of technology and sequencing. Hawks had a signature style that included the Prophet 5 sync that was very prevalent on the car songs, Hello Again, and of course, Let's Go. David Robinson, the drummer. Besides his superb percussion work, David designed the album covers for the cars, and totally iconic. And after his semi-retirement from the music business, after the band's breakup, David became an accomplished entrepreneur who makes and sells his own jewelry, among other ventures. Again, some of the most iconic album covers of all time. So here is my fiver by the cars, my top five recorded performances. Number five, Drive. This was a gem of a departure by the cars. A song Okasik wrote about a downtrodden ex-lover who is self-destructing. Drive was the highest charting song by the cars, rising to number three on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1984. It went to number one on the AC charts in the US as well as Canada, and was a top five smash throughout Europe, including the UK, Germany, and Ireland. Benjamin Orr sang lead on Drive, and I believe it was one of his best vocal performances ever. Subtle and hypnotic. Sad and so affecting. And number four, Moving in Stereo, co-written by Hawks and Okasik. This song has the cadence of a creepy dream sequence from a psychodrama. It was intended to draw parallels of a stereo recording and real life, in essence, moving in stereo through life. Moving in Stereo has one of the most memorable song placements in a movie ever, of course. The pool scene in the classic 82 comedy, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, where Judge Reinhold's character is fantasizing about the character played by Phoebe Cates. The scene is, of course, hilarious, but equally uncomfortable. Orr executed another stellar interpretation of a song he didn't write with his lead vocal on Moving in Stereo. His timbre really sets the mood of the song. Number three, My Best Friend's Girl. From the beginning, guitar and hand claps, this song is impossible not to immediately participate in as a listener. It's just, it just gets you every time. Written by Rick Okasik. Now he said of the song, nothing in that song happened to me personally. I just figured having a girlfriend stolen was probably something that happened to a lot of people. The lyrics in the chorus were an afterthought. Okasik said, at some point I realized my lyrics didn't include the words my best friend's girl. So I pulled out the lyrics someone had typed up and added a chorus in the margin in pen. She's my best friend's girl, she's my best friend's girl, but she used to be mine. The background vocals were your typical, brilliant, Cars-esque vocals. They never got the credit they deserved on their background vocals. They were just in a whole different league, completely different. Number two, Just What I Needed. Of course, the breakout hit for the Cars and the first single from their epic debut album. The song was composed by Rick Okasik while he was living in the basement of a commune in Newton, Massachusetts. The opening guitar and drum exchange in the intro of the song was inspired by the 1968 bubblegum pop tune, Yummy, 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 recorded by the one-hit wonder, Ohio Express. Rick's lyric, Wasting All My Time Time was a reference to the song Sister Ray by Velvet Underground, a group that was a huge influence on Okasik. I don't mind you coming here and wasting all my time. Benjamin Orr was given lead vocal honors on Just What I Needed, and he gave a consummate performance that 
for me, was his finest. That's saying a lot because Benjamin Orr has some amazing vocals. And number one, let's go. I mean, it is unfair how perfect this song is. From the second this song starts and you hear that distinct wah, wah, wah keyboard, it's... It's going to be a good day, no matter how bad the day is. I can't tell you how many times this comes on when I'm driving and I almost run off the road because when it gets to the end of the chorus, I have to do those hand claps, the <laughs> let's go, you know. Um, now that part was derived from the 1962 song, Let's Go Pony by the Routers. It also has a simple synth melody played by Greg Hawks using the Sync 2 lead preset. The end chorus when Benjamin Orr just wells, you know, I like a nylon, baby. You know, it just knocks me out every time. It's so good. I like the nightlight, baby. It's such a tight rocker that has that typical sardonic humor and quirkiness that separated the cars from everybody else. There'll never be another group quite like the cars. I proudly, proudly salute one of America's greatest bands. So what are your thoughts on the Cars? What is your Cars Fiverr? Tell us. Leave us a comment. Also, all the songs that I just mentioned are below in our curated playlist. Make sure to go listen to them. If you like this content, subscribe so you can keep up with our newest content. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.